Hello Cobras and welcome back to Pokemon Omega Ruby, I'm Triclet Tamer. Continuing the Delta episode, our next rendezvous point with Steven is here in Meteor Falls. So let's come here after a long while and we're able to do more stuff with Waterfall and everything. <laughs> That's the sound of Clefairy! A Pokemon that makes sense to run into here, but it's uh, after you get the National Dex and all that stuff and do the Groudon event. Uh, is there a hidden item up here? There obviously isn't, but I obviously must have already picked it up. Let's use Waterfall on the big one here. Surprised the current's not pushing us away. Bill Cosby is really helping us out here. Okay, there's plenty of paths to take. How about we start right here in this little sliver, because there's a hidden item that we can pick up. It's a Stardust. I like Stardust very much so. And they're awesome. I'm talking to fill any voids that there may be, so I don't have to do a two second jump cut. So I'm doing a kind of Sean Connery voice. It's not really Sean Connery, to Connery at all. I don't even know. I'm thinking like Charles Dance, Tywin Lannister. It's the throne that everyone wants. That's a pretty funny commercial of how modern it is with the Game of Thrones related stuff. Okay, let's move along now, and as you may expect, we got some Dragon Tames around here, and this is where they do their training. The champion even visits. Now, do you see how special it is here? Well, little do you know, Nicola, is that I'm actually the president to myself. I went from French, Greek, to Scottish, Irish. Number of hidden items, number of visible items that we haven't gotten. There's obviously the Aerodactylite that I spoiled that we want to get. And it's a battle girl, we got dragon types and fighting types. My muscles are trying to tell me something, they want me to battle you. Tess, my muscles are crying. Well maybe you should take a shower because that's like sweat or something. If that's supposed to be like some kind of metaphor. I'm not into this costume. I'm a dragon tamer though, so I have to wear it. Uh, it's all a misunderstanding. Uh, I can explain. Lift up the building on a tricycle with your lollipop. I'm just trying to remember things. Okay, I guess there must be something hidden over there on that little tiny rock. But it's not quite a concern to me. I just want to get up here because we got a veteran couple of elderly trainers. We're always battling our Pokemon against each other, so we're confident. It's been 50 years since we got married. Nothing can break our bonds in matrimony. John and Jay. Oh no, we lost, honey. Oh no, we lost, sweetie. Who is who? Maybe Jay is secretly a dude or something. I don't know. I'm not going to question all that. Here's Steven and a veteran lady. T2, we have the meteorite shard, and I have come to understand many things as I suspected might happen. Allow me to introduce you. The honorable lady you see before you is a descendant of the ancient Draconids. Yes, I am one of the Draconid people, one of those ancient folk tasked with passing down the knowledge of Mega Evolution with the great lore of Lord Rayquaza, who was the beginning of all. Story time. Since time's long gone, Hoenn has repeatedly suffered great disasters. At times, the destruction took the form of a huge meteoroid which fell upon our land from distant space. At other times, the primal versions of our own super ancient Pokemon brought us to the brink of destruction. Each time, Lord Rayquaza has saved us from doom. The chosen Lord Keeper, standing before a stone that shone with rainbow light, offered up a wish to the Great One. And Lord Rayquaza's body was suffused with a brilliant light and transformed. In its transformed state, Rayquaza's power was more devastating than ever before, overcoming even the super ancient Pokemon with all their primal power. A rainbow colored stone, an invocation from the Lore Keeper, and a Rayquaza unlike any ever seen. I see, it does resemble what we know of the process of Mega Evolution. Yes, it does indeed. A Pokemon, a person, a stone of power, the bonds that tie them all together. The transformation of the Pokemon that occurs as a result of this phenomenon was called Mega Evolution by later peoples. So the mechanism for Mega Evolution was discovered as a result of the first meeting between humanity and Rayquaza. Hmm, but I have one last question. That Lore Keeper you spoke of. The Lore Keeper is the one who has inherited the knowledge and power to summon Lord Rayquaza when disaster imperils the world. The true Lore Keeper of the current generation is the one called Xenia. The disaster that now approaches our planet as it has twice before. Zinnia has been trying for some time to avert it, in her own way. To draw Lord Rayquaza to our sphere, she joined a certain organization that sought to revive the Super Ancient Pokemon. She taught them the secrets needed to bring back these threats and summon the Great Dragon itself. And now it seems she travels the land, scouring the world for keystones. So it was true. As I had suspected, that woman who appeared at the Space Center was one of the Draconids. But I never dreamed she was involved in the attempted revival of the Super Ancient Pokemon. 
and full knowledge of the power they held, fully understanding the terrible changes they would wreck upon our world. Still she helped bring that situation about? Did she give a thought to the many people in Pokemon whose lives were put at grave risk by her actions? Could she accept the inevitable sacrifice of so many lives in order to protect the planet from the coming meteoroid? Balance must rule this world. History is doomed to repeat itself. While our people have overcome many disasters in the past, it was always through great, great sacrifice. Yet we have continued to struggle to preserve peace for as many years as we can. That is how we have protected this world upon which we now live. People, Pokemon, all nature, and yes, even you. I do not know exactly what you plan to do, but do you believe that you are not sacrificing anything for your own protection? Sinia will follow her convictions until the very end, even knowing the sacrifices that they will require even if the sacrificial blade is leveled at her own heart. Is that right? I understand. Thank you for everything. What is this? The vague sense of apprehension, and my intuition has proven true. I'm going back to Rustboro first. I have to get back to Devon. We may meet you there, Steven. Pretty long story we had there. <laughs> I'm not... Fully sure of where I'm going to split the episodes. I might split it at some point and get an intro. Have to like find a place to squeeze it in, and of course I got the wrong place to get the Mega Stone. Circle my way back to where we must be in order to find the Mega Stone. So how about we carefully go down and grab it? And it's showing the stuff. So there's probably something under this Aerodactylite. So let's click again, and it's a super appeal to add to my collection. And by the way, there was another ladder that I could have went up by those couple trainers, but there wasn't really anything there. Not even anything hidden. And then when you continue along, you go down this ladder, and there is surfing to do. Sorry if it's kind of hard to follow along with, but it's kind of linear, but it's just things all over the place here at Meteor Falls. And here's a spot you can hop off, hidden stuff that I've been anticipating on this rock that's not on this rock. Go over to the side and over a little bit and down. Okay, it's next to the rock. It's a star piece. I like star pieces to add to my money laundering skills. And use that super repel we gain, it's like a new fresh one. Even though you should go in order of freshness but from my older one so that they don't become older something. And once we're in here, we get a great TM. O2 Dragon Claw. I think I will actually teach that to Gexter. And by the way, this is the room to find the Pokemon Bagon. I'm pretty sure it's like the only room specifically that has it. At least that was the case in RSC. Going down south all the way brings you to this area, ultimately resulting in a PP max. Great. Oh, wah, wah, wah. Uh oh, I hear bad music. Wah! It's probably that same science guy. Well, I already know it is. Ooh, you're the fantastic trainer who helped me before. And the music is back. Yo, geek! Hey, you gotta help me, please! Whoa, you're the kid trainer I met before. You're getting in my way again. Alrighty then, it's time to fight another Team Magma Grunt. Might as well keep this fight in because they don't really show a lot of fights and it's the same guy that we fought the first time, so just for commemorative sake, I guess, I will keep this in. This Poochian has since become a mighty in it. I don't know if we fought him ever since that first time. We might have, but I don't remember what else he would have. Maybe just another mighty in it. Double it up or something. Alright, let's play rough with this thing. Even if my attack was lowered, it's still going to go down that quickly. I don't know how many days later this is I'm recording this, but <laughs> I'm just doing all the things I can because uh, I split up the episodes in a different way. Alright, it's got a gold bat, pretty typical Pokemon. Uh, I'll go for Statica. Uh, she needs some level ups and Bill Cosby. I can slow her down because she gets the boosted ESP from the tradedness. And this gold bat is a little dark blue color. It's not like it's a shiny gold bat. Is shiny gold bat pink or I'm pretty sure it's green because uh, Zubat and Golbat's shiny colors are green and then Crobat becomes pink. I do believe that's how it works. And this Magma Grunt has suffered yet another defeat. <sighs> Am I destined to lose to you all the time? Yes you are. What's wrong, Grunt? What? You again? Fine. Even though I know I can't win, I'm going to challenge you for Courtney. Well, I'm going to cut this battle out after he does his hand thing. Even though I knew I wouldn't win, it's still disappointing. Yeah, I know, just being a lowly grunt that's destined to lose. Sound the retreat! It's only good since they my own hide, for Courtney's sake. And there's gonna be plenty more. <laughs> it's not the pentuplet battle, though. I'm hungry, so I'm going back. Ah! Well, my stomach's ready for battle. Because it's rumbling. 
I'm so hungry. Well, Bill Cosby is higher level now because he had to go through all these battles back to back. I lost like I figured. I'm gonna get some food on the way back. I don't know if there's more. Okay, I guess it's just four. Because this guy's gonna be talking. So, so thank you. You helped me again. I think I'll give you another great bye. Oh, now it's not the time for this. We're in big trouble. Team Magma stole the control device for the link cable that our company had been developing, and Great Pulse not really good enough this far in the game anyway. It's a special tool called the Dimensional Shifter. The person who stole it was short and pretty, and she had a nasty look in her eyes. What shall I do? What would you do? What shall I do? They must have headed for the Moss Deep Space Center. Steven must have gone ahead to the Space Center, but. But I'm worried. I guess we're gonna have to be heading back to the Moss Deep Space Center again. Goose chase. Okay, over this way, here they are. Mission, start! Courtney with her robotic speaking. Okay, into the Space Center now, back to the music that I like, even though it played briefly. And here's the pintuplets. Hee 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 We finally meet again. It's been three, hmm? How long has it been? Then kaboop, doesn't matter. Brace yourself. We won't let you call us mere quintuplets. Okay, it's quintuplets, not pintuplets. I, I knew pintuplets was right. I was like, wait, that don't seem right. <laughs> I forget myself. I am actually going to take Latin this year at school. It's probably going to be a video that goes up before school. I'm going to try to record a couple more because obviously school's starting up soon and I need to record a little bit more often when I'm at home because obviously I don't record at school. I could record at school, just take a laptop and play the game, but then I'd have to like post commentate. And I plan to do a completely post commentated let's play in the near future, actually. But the way this battle works, like I was mentioning the first time with these guys, now that they're Marianas, they all have Intimidate, so they're gonna lower your attack power down. So how about I use a special attack, even if Bill Cosby's physical oriented? Surf is still gonna easily take him down. And I definitely do not need to level up Bill Cosby anymore because she's now my second highest level Pokemon. Again, with the Bill Cosby and then she thing that makes me go crazy. Oh no, we lost again! But wait, King Dad! Haha, <laughs> I knew we would lose. I want to win in style like the Hoenn Rangers. It's odd. That strategy, intimidate five times in a row. Should be invincible. Did you cheat? Grumble, grumble. Nincom poop! You're strong, aren't you? Stop whining! Courtney is on the second floor. It's pathetic, but we can't stop her. Please, please help her. Well, I usually do use Bill Cosby to battle camera rubs. So how about I switch up my rank slight so, so that strain and static are there. Your timing is impeccable as always, T2. Team Magma, what do you intend to do with that device? You realize that this is the last hope we have of saving this planet. Last hope? Ha ha! <laughs> my team, the team I put all my hope into, Leader Maxi, was broken. He was broken. He was broken by the sprat. How convenient it must be for you to put all the blame on another. <sighs> Shut up! Enough, I've had enough of this world. Ah, uh -huh. I know. Inside that rocket is the same amount. No, even more. Pokemon life energy than what powered the ultimate weapon in the war 3,000 years ago. What? Ah, uh -huh. I think we're in for an impact so big it will surpass the massive explosion that ended that war. I don't know what all this talk of a meteoroid is, but I have no need for it. Here, by my own hand, I'll make this rocket explode and bring an end to this world. I will fix Project Azoth! Of course, I'll also destroy this dimensional shifter that's supposed to warp the asteroids away someplace too. T2, this fool, this incredible fool really intends to do it. If we don't stop this now, our whole world will be embroiled in the destruction. You're ready to battle, aren't you? Yes, we am. Wonderful! Don't. Get. In. My. Way. So, uh, of course, I'm not going to be single-handedly doing this. I don't need to worry about Static anymore. I don't even know why I forgot about Steven. So, oh yeah, he's like the champion under me, and he has good Pokemon too, so I don't know why I thought of the stuff. And good thing, he's actually sending out his Skarmory so I can use Earthquake without worrying about it because, of course, Steven's a Steel-type user. And I guess it's going to be a double Intimidate here? Oh wait, never mind. Camera up doesn't have Intimidate up. Since the thing appeared on the side of the screen, for whatever reason, I thought it was coming from Camera up. And on the topic of Camera up, she's actually able to Mega Evolve it by now. I don't think she did in the previous battle with her. Yeah, she didn't because she was trying to get the Mega Branklet from Wally that didn't have it because I'm pretty sure it was Zinnia that stole it. Yay, putting everything together. Alright, the Intimidate doesn't really do too much good. And powerful Camerupt is going to take down the Mariana, but also Strain as well. 
That just puts some strain on my day. Aye, 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 aye. Hugh, hugh, hugh. Let's go to Alpha Bird for this because Flamethrower or Thunderbolt won't really do too much. But the Grunt has a wheezing. And we're able to do more things about it. Ah, uh, what can I do? I could hope for a poison and get a facade, but I'll just go complete power with my Sky Plate Brave Bird Stab. Same type deck bonus, because that's what stab means kind of thing. Alright, gets it down past health, so I can just finish it off with pretty much anything. Destiny Pawn, attack Skarmory because it will be useless. Oh, well, whoever hits Weezing to take it down will be bringing stuff. And this camera up is actually causing some problems with me. Well, it's coming back to bite me in the butt now that she can mega evolve her camera up. Pretty crazy battle. Three of my Pokemon fainted. None of Stevens. Guess I might just give the champion tile back to him. Just barely. You're crazy strong, just like always. Why? Why must you always, 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 always get in my way? Darn! Dang it! T2, that was our chance. Take the dimensional shifter in. That's a whizmer. Mermermer. Aster snatched the dimensional shifter away from Courtney. That Pokemon doesn't have belong to. Nice one, Aster. Yep, Zinnia. You're the the Draconid, yup. Or you could just call me Zinnia. Aster! Mer. Thank you, dear. Now then. That is an impressive machine. Snap your fingers, the meteoroid vanishes, and we all live happily ever after. I snapped my fingers again there. Ah, uh, indeed. It's like that former champ said. This thing is the best hope we have of saving this planet and everything on it. But you know, it could also be the worst tragedy imaginable for some other world and everything on it. What are you trying to say? I'm not talking to you. You don't get it. Ugh. But you, T2, hope for our world, tragedy for another. You get it, don't you? I'm pretty sure I do get that. And you come through again. You never disappoint me. My people know it. From generation to generation, we pass along the lore about the distortions in the world born by the Mega Evolution Mechanism. And about the existence of another world, which we have long observed to be just like this one and yet not the same. That's right. A whole in region that's almost exactly like this one we live in. Filled with Pokemon and people like us. A world where maybe the evolution of Pokemon took a slightly different path, which where Mega Evolution is unknown. A world where that war 3,000 years ago never happened. A world where the ultimate weapon was never even built. And in that Hoenn of that world, what would happen if one day, out of the blue, a meteoroid appeared? What would happen to the people of that world without the technology to destroy the meteoroid or the power to warp it away? Looks like it's beyond the power of your imagination. Zinnia crushed the dimensional shifter in her hand. What kind of fool are you? You have no substantive proof, and yet you claim another world, one just like our own, exists? Out of this fantasy, you you have destroyed our only hope. What have you done? Farewell, brief hope. You, you, do you even know? Now what are we to do? Come down there, Prof. It'll be okay. I, we, we can protect this world. And the other. Who exactly is we? What are your intentions? Oh yeah, silly me. I forgot the other thing I came for. But what? Snatched her keystone. Ah, eh. And that's the keystone gotten. Now I'll put it together with the keystone they've got in their base. Mer. Looks like my next appointment is calling, so I'll excuse myself now. Later. Mer. That's that. Her. Leader. Leader. Maxie's keystone. Is she trying to steal it? Pretty sure she did. No. No. Confound it all. So she must be making for Team Magma's hideout next. Think, Steven, think. What to do, what to do. He's thinking long and hard, but we're left to do things for ourselves. Until next time on Pokemon Omega Ruby, where we head to the Team Magma hideout by Lily Cove City to try to catch up with Zinnia there. I'm stopping the episode again at the same place. Don't tell us yourself.